Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for joining me every Saturday for long form videos. Today's video is a very popular topic. We're going to be going over the retinoid showdown. We're going to have retinol, which we're all very familiar with on the channel, versus adapalene versus tretinoin. So we're going to jump into what are the differences, what's best for you, how to use them, and some common mistakes. So let's jump into it. Think of the umbrella term retinoid. It will encompass all things vitamin A, vitamin A derivatives. They will go into the cell, into the nucleus of the cell, bind to receptors with different affinities, selectivities, and do its magic. Why should we use retinoids? Help clear pores, break up whiteheads and blackheads, increase cell turnover and help with hyperpigmentation, and increase collagen production to help with fine lines and wrinkles. But are they all created the same? No, retinoids are all different. And like we said, they bind to different receptors with different affinities and they'll hold on to them at different levels. And so they're different potencies to these retinoids. So we'll be going over retinol versus adapalene and we'll even mention tretinoin and tazarotene as well and even retinaldehyde because there are a lot more retinaldehyde products being produced. So let's go over retinoids. Over the counter, you can find them as adapalene 0.1%, retinol, retinaldehyde, even retinol, but we won't talk about that because it's pretty weak sauce. So we wanna talk about the stuff that can really give you a nice punch and help with increasing collagen production. That's evidence back. We always wanna stay with the evidence, okay? So. We have retinol, let's start with retinol, which we've talked about on the channel quite a bit. Rock is the OG. This is the first retinol I've ever used. When I was a dermatology resident at Harvard, we got prescriptions of tretinoin that we tried, but we also needed to try out retinol, especially in the cold winters in Boston. I couldn't use tretinoin all the time. I would actually use retinol and Rock was the first OG retinol I've ever used. Now retinol has to be converted twice to become active. It has to go from retinol to retinaldehyde and then retinaldehyde to retinoic acid, and then it can go into the nucleus and bind to different receptors. It has to be metabolically converted twice. And that's why we say retinaldehyde is like the big brother, big sib to retinol, because that one only requires one conversion step to become retinoic acid and active. Retinol is great because it does its magic. Once it binds to those nuclear receptors, gene transcription takes place, we get gene expression, and then it works on the pores and your wrinkles and such. The evidence is strong, for helping with fine lines and wrinkles, but I don't ever consider a good acne medication. It doesn't bind to receptors strong enough or selective enough to work on the pores, cleaning out your pores and breaking up whiteheads and blackheads. So I always say it's better for anti-aging in beginners. It's very gentle. You can find it over the counter, so it's very accessible. I talked about Olay on the channel quite a bit. You can get it at different concentrations if they do disclose the concentrations, it can range from 0.25% to 1% retinol, which is quite potent in the grand scheme of things. Now the big sieve, retinaldehyde, much more unstable and harder to create, but you know some brands have done a good job. I've talked about May Love's Moonlight Night Serum, Aven, their retinol, their retinaldehyde multi-corrective cream, very nice. They also make a nice eye cream with retinaldehyde, and Naturium has done a great job as well. So. I say that when you have a stronger, more potent retinoid though, you're trading off with tolerability. You might have increased potency, but it might be more irritating. And so I say retinol is your beginner choice for anti-aging. So, you know, late 20s and up, maybe mid 20s. Teenagers, you do not need to start a retinol for anti-aging purposes. But if your dermatologist tells you to start a retinoid for acne, that's a different story. So if you have mild acne, I would look towards the adapalene side. Adapalene is a synthetic retinoid, and the difference that really stands out is that it doesn't need to be converted metabolically like retinol, retinaldehyde to become retinoic acid. Because it's synthetic, it's a little newer generation, it can go right into the nucleus and start binding to those receptors, specifically the RAR, gamma, RAR beta, nuclear receptors to start gene transcription, and then really work on your pores, help with the walls of the pore from shedding into the pore and clogging them up, and just keeping them clear, because all of the debris that's in the pores will feed the acne-causing bacteria and make it proliferate and become an inflammatory 
painful red bumps. So Adapalene can come as different gel, which we used to prescribe, but now it's over the counter in the US, 0.1% Adapalene, or La Roche-Posay's Effaclar Adapalene Gel, and then Neutrogena has also made Adapalene as well. When it comes to fine lines and wrinkles, not the best. I would say it's better for mild acne. There's maybe a couple of studies that show that it works on fine lines and wrinkles, but if you were to compare between a retinol and different, and your skincare goals are working on fine lines and wrinkles, I'd go with retinol over adapalene. If you're a teenager or a young adult, you're dealing with whiteheads, blackheads, inflammatory acne, adapalene is your friend there, okay? So that's where you consider it. Adapalene is known to be very gentle, especially in the 0.1% range. When its prescription is 0.3%, still very tolerable, but could be more drying than the 0.1% gel. Now, if you have access to a dermatologist and you want to work on not just acne, but also fine lines and wrinkles with more of a bigger punch, something that would directly bind to the receptors right away, that's retinoic acid, AKA tretinoin. Retin-A is the brand name. And this I prescribe to my patients all the time. They come in different concentrations, depending on the brand. If it's generic tretinoin, it comes as 0 0.025, 0 0.05, and 0.1%. I use 0.05 because I can't go stronger than that. 0.025 I can tolerate, but 0.05, that's the max I can do. The big sib to tretinoin is tazeratine. Also works really well on acne and fine lines and wrinkles. And there are studies that show head to head that tazeratine is better at reversing photoaging, working on fine lines and wrinkles, and even acne, breaking up whiteheads and blackheads. But tolerability, pretty tough. I'd say not poor, but challenging. And for me, I have a hard time tolerating tazeratine cream. But there's tazeratine lotion that is available that I can tolerate in a lotion vehicle, but insurance coverage, very poor, very hard to get that. So I stick with tretinoin. It's kind of a nice balance of accessibility, affordability, plus tolerability. Now, tretinoin, that one does not have to be converted at all. It's retinoic acid ready to go. And, but again, that's prescription. So how do we use all of these? Adapalene does pretty well in the daylight. Retinol, pretty so-so. Tretinoin though can be quite unstable and supposedly very unstable when mixed with a Levon benzoyl peroxide product. There are pharmaceutical companies that have compounded successfully tretinoin with benzoyl peroxide, but for a longer period of time, they have been doing a good job mixing a compounded version of adapalene with benzoyl peroxide all in one and that's called epidural forte or epidural. I would say at bedtime, use your retinoid. I don't wanna say, oh, but sometimes you can do adapalene during the day. No, I just say for everyone, just do your, your retinoid at bedtime because who knows how unstable your retinol is. They might say it's photostable, but I don't always buy that. I want your skincare to work at its max potential and so use a pea size amount at bedtime after you wash your face on the clean skin, but make sure it's not damp because you don't want damp skin and the product gets into the deeper layers of your skin and causes irritation. So I always say a pea size amount. So say we have a pump like number seven, apply it to your face. If you have very dry skin, you might want to prime your skin with a little moisturizer first, okay? But say a pea size amount, just small amount. Maybe it can go a little bigger than that. There, pea. Break it up into two. I always start on the forehead and I work my way down and I make sure I get a good amount in my nose and my forehead, you can get in the temples and then end around the mouth. This is the most sensitive area around your mouth. So this is where you're gonna peel in the beginning, most likely. So then you connect the dots. I stay outside of the orbital bone unless it's a dedicated eye cream with retinol or retinaldehyde. Otherwise, it can cause irritation of your eyelids and dry skin. And some eye doctors think it can cause even dry eye. All right, and then after this, you can apply your favorite moisturizer, whether it's La Roche-Posay's, Tolarian, Double Repair Moisturizer, or CeraVe's PM Lotion, any of those lightweight moisturizers, or a thicker cream like Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream, and then go to bed. And then always, always in the daytime, apply your sunscreen to protect your skin from UV radiation. Whether it's retinaldehyde, retinol, adapalene, or tretinoin, do the same principle, just a pea size amount at bedtime. If you can work your way up to every other day to every day, that's where you'll get max benefits based on studies. If you're just cycling through it, just doing a couple times a week, and then stopping and doing other exfoliants, then it's not gonna work. 
you have to do it at least every other day to every night. And I would start off though, in the first couple weeks, do like Tuesday, Friday, and then work your way up to three times a week and then try to get up to nightly if you're able to. I wouldn't mix it with vitamin C to begin with. Azelaic acid, pretty, pretty good, possible for sure, like vitamin C, but I just wouldn't do it because it might increase the likelihood of you getting irritation from your retinoids. So I wouldn't mix it with other actives in the beginning. And I definitely wouldn't mix it with any exfoliants or even leave on benzoyl peroxide like we mentioned before. So just make sure to do it, just moisturizer and your retinoid. And then after that, you can start playing around with like azelaic acid, niacinamide with it, although I don't like niacinamide serums at all. Sandwich method, if you do have dry sensitive skin, consider that by putting a moisturizer before and after your retinoid. Now, biggest mistake I'd say, just using too much. You're using more than a pea size amount. You're putting dollops of pea sizes all over your face and then connecting the dots after that. I've been seeing those TikToks and also using too much on your neck. The neck is a very delicate area. I would do half a pea for your neck to start off and then you can work your way up to a full pea. And yes, you can bring it down to the chest to reverse photo aging here. The breakdown would be retinol is great for beginners who are looking into fine lines and wrinkles, not for teenagers, not for young adults or looking to treat their acne. If you have mild acne and you wanna start with a gentle product, Adapalene's your friend there. If you are an advanced user and you wanna work on photo aging, say you're after age 30, and you want to work on that or you might have a little bit of acne too talk to your dermatologist about tretinoin hope this rundown was helpful thank you guys for subscribing to the channel please hit the like button please subscribe and share with your friends who are into skincare and hit that bell notification for new videos every saturday hope this helps peace